Yo, yo. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. Man, it's a beautiful night. Wait for some people to join here. We only got six. Hey, Howie, how are you doing? How's the family? Nick. Don't worry, you'll get your shout out soon, Nick. Lance, Lance is coming in here too. I'll talk to Lance. <clears throat> There's a man of the hour, Jamie. I got a message for you. Just you wait. All right, let's see. We got 801. We'll get this thing going. I'm doing well. Family's doing well. Um, Wheaton's good. A little boring. It's kind of like Evanston, but a little more boring. Um, you know, but it's it's been good just to, to be with the family. Um, just relaxing, taking time, getting in the word. But um, I think we'd all like to, well, I mean, for us Chicago people, but especially us Northwestern people, we're trying to get back to uh, back to Evanston, get this thing going for the cats. But uh, it's been good. Been good, for sure. Kina, okay, Emma, I see you. Emma's here. Party starting. There she is. <laughs> oh man, this is so weird. It's like I'm expecting you guys to talk to me, but I can't hear anything at all. I'm getting no feedback, but that's all right. I like hearing myself talk sometimes, but <laughs> oh man, all right. I'll give it. Two, two or three more minutes, let people get in here, and then we'll get going. Um, yes, Emma, we do need some dubs for the cats. Um, some big ones for the cats. Ooh, man. All right. Now, I'm sure this is a broken record, but I want you guys, everyone who's seen Tiger King, give me your input on Carol. What's her deal? I have my opinion. I just want to know. I think we all know the truth, but I want to know what you guys think. Emma, I know you have an opinion on Carol. I need to hear it. All right. Let's see what you got. Yep. Did she, though? Did she? We don't know. All I know is I kind of like my boy Joe Exotic. He's kind of live. You know, he's got some sweet tigers. You know, he's... His whole wedding situation was, was very interesting. I was a little taken aback by that. But, uh, you know, I thought he was pretty cool. Pretty cool guy overall. <laughs> um, man. Yeah, t yes, Tiger King was very frightening. Uh, I, I've seriously contemplated stop to stop watching it. But, you know, I had to see it th through to the end. Yes, Free, J free Joe. That's what I'm talking Hey, I heard Trump's going to pardon him. So we'll see about that. Hopefully before, <laughs> before this next ele next election. Um, oh, spoilers, guys. I'm sorry. I thought everyone's seen it by now. I forgot. Hey, you know what? That's on me. You know, I I'm really sorry. I, I don't know what to do. If, if you need, you know, request me on Venmo. I'll throw you some money. Uh, if I could erase your memory from what you've heard from me, I, I would do it. But, you know, I... I'm not Will Smith. I'm not in Men in Black, but um, all right, let's see what we got here. All right, one minute. We're going to get this thing going. I'm going to bring on Lance. Uh, we're going to get some introductions going. Um, exotic. Pe yes, it should have been called Exotic People. Seriously. I guess that's what you get out in Oklahoma and in, in Florida, for real. They're not like the Chicago Chicago people up here. We're normal. If, if you're from Oklahoma, you know, I'm sure you're normal, too. Just, just to put that out there, but man, oh. what's an NCAA? What's an NCAA violation? Oh yes, you're right. The Venmo. I take it back. Don't Venmo me, and don't request me. That's a violation. Man, I'm just breaking all the rules tonight. I'm giving up spoilers. I'm talking about Venmo. Man, I did see a tweet tonight though that um, the entire Ole Miss football team. <laughs> 
<laughs> agreed to take a 10% pay cut uh, from the boosters to support people affected by COVID. And I had to read it four times over. I didn't know if they were talking about the football program or their their players. So who knows? But uh, crazy times, man. Crazy times. Is the NCAA still a thing? You know what? I couldn't tell you, Jay. I really don't know. Me, I really don't know. I really don't know. I think so. Got challenge? Yep, we're gonna get going going with that. For the Shy Day Friday workout challenge, we have Andrew and Kyle from UIC got the dub. If you guys haven't seen the video, backs, so we're doing some. Let's see. All right, we so um, let's get this thing going. I'm gonna add Lance in here, and he's got an introduction, and we're gonna get going with that. So let's see if we can get Lance in on here. still feeling good you and Kristen yeah feeling good yeah. uh I still can't smell or taste which is crazy <laughs> yeah so one day when I get smell and taste back I'll probably um yeah just be so thankful to my five senses having all five of them back <laughs> no doubt yeah so yeah well uh so Lance tonight's going to introduce our testimony and then we're gonna get rolling from there Lance has a pretty strong connection with her and just going to introduce her and then we'll get some questions and get you guys involved with that. So yeah, Lance. Yeah. So this is probably, I'm, I don't know, like I'm juiced to hear from our speaker tonight. The person, she keeps it real, raw, authentic. Facts. She's about to bring it tonight. So I'm so excited. She, um, she hails from the great state of Tennessee had to get a little accent there um but she's a two-time ncaa um competitor in pole vaulting yes sir yes so she set the the record actually at indiana university in 2014 hey. um and that propelled her on to be a 2016 olympian that's right we got an olympian coming in to the live um and she um, was representing Canada. So, oh, Canada. I don't know the next line after that. Yeah, but maybe when she gets on, she can finish it. Please help me welcome Kelsey Ave Hollihan. Yes, Let's sir. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, give me a sec. I got to add her in here. Got to scroll through all these names. Just bear with me, please. All right. Oh, is she on here? Let's see. There she is. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we got the invite. We're waiting. Hello. Hi. How are you? I'm good. This is so bizarre. Like <laughs> You're telling me, seriously. never done this before but it's it's pretty cool you did a good job it's really hard to talk when you don't get feedback from people. i know i i was just rambling a little bit but i had to fill the space you know i'm not just gonna yeah. sit here and i can't yeah. believe you went with tiger king topic that was bold it was you know <laughs> it was the first thing that came to mind everyone's been asking me about it but yeah you know what i i crazy stuff I I hope I didn't spoil it for you or anybody else. I might have, but sorry if I'm, I did. I'm in the loop. I'm in the loop. So good. All right. Well, first question: How are you doing? How's how's quarantine life treating you? What have you been up to? Good. Um, I feel like this week is the first week where it started to feel like 
this is long and this stinks yeah. and I feel like I'm trapped <laughs> in my home. Um, but everybody's in that same position. I think everybody feels kind of the same. It's just like, there's so mm -hmm. much unknown and there's so many questions still of like, how long are we going to be in this? Like, are things yeah. going to go back to normal or Seriously. what is life going to look like moving forward? So just kind of, you know, resting yeah. in the unknown. Yeah, no, I, that's real. I think there's so much uncertainty for all of us, not just with sports, but life in general. So mm -hmm. I think it's, you know, it's been good a little bit to take that time and kind of rest in that. But also, I think everyone's getting a little antsy, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, you know, second question. So when you competed in the Olympics in 2016, kind of a cliche question, but what was like the highlight for you? What was what did you enjoy most about that? Oh, my gosh, that's a loaded <laughs> question. Yeah, I know it is. Um, so let's see. The experience itself, like actually being at the Olympics, mm -hmm. what I enjoyed the most was just the moment of walking into the Olympic Stadium and being like, oh my That's gosh, nice. like I'm at the Olympics. <laughs> this is crazy. That is crazy. Um, yeah. And just feeling like it was such a gift. I really felt like at total peace, I was ranked dead last in the competition, which yeah. was honestly a blessing because yeah. I could just enjoy it. Like there was yeah. no pressure on me. Yeah. Um, so that was the coolest moment of the whole experience but really yeah. the whole lead up to getting to the olympics was really special because it was just kind of a wild um a wild ride qualifying yeah. to the olympics and god just like did crazy amazing things through that journey and it was really cool that like he chose me to like participate in that which was awesome yeah that's so cool so. i think I think it's so it's so easy for us to like get wrapped up in everything and sometimes it's just best to just be in the moment be there and appreciate you know what what god the position he's put you in and so yeah, that's so cool sure. to hear that you just kind of enjoyed being in that moment because i think a lot of us let it pass by and um, yeah it's, it's an easy thing to do to just kind of let it go right past you and not realize it when you're there but yeah so cool. and definitely like just to be completely honest like i didn't necessarily like take it as a gift yeah. as I was yeah. leading up to it because I was injured from January through June of the Olympic year. And so it was really stressful because I had to modify all of my workouts. I had a lot of uncertainty about whether or not I would even be able to try to qualify to the Olympics. And yeah. uh, I really had to just like lean in to that situation and just trust that whatever the mm. outcome, like God was using it for good and that I yeah. was being sharpened through that experience but yeah that's easier to say now looking back that i know what the outcome was and that i got yeah. to go to the olympics yeah, and sure. i and i performed well but in the moment it was definitely challenging and mm -hmm. i i mean on the day to day it's not like i just handled it perfect and was like okay god like i trust you like there were days where i was like what the heck like this is my dream <laughs> what is happening yeah so, um but it, it was it's fun to look back on now because it feels like a lifetime ago to be honest yeah. Yeah, I'm, seriously, I like kind of going off that, like, it, that's been a while since that happened. And like, so just the, the other question I had for you, like, um, you've been through a lot since then, like, what has God mm -hmm. been teaching you and showing you through, you know, the trials and everything that's happened since then? Yeah, um, honestly, I feel like it's ebbed and flowed. And there have been mm -hmm. times where I felt over the past four years really far away from God. Yeah. Um, specifically, 20... Well, I guess coming off of 2016, I had really high hopes because yeah. I was like, okay, I just made the Olympic final. I placed top 12. Mm -hmm. I signed a contract with Nike. Yeah. I competed in my first Diamond League competition, which is like the highest yeah. caliber competition uh -huh. out there. And so I just thought like naively, all right, like I've made it. Mm -hmm. Like I've broken through to that next stage. And now I get to have the career I've always dreamed of. And that's just not yeah. how things played out for me. I had a really hard year in 2017, just dealing with some self-confidence issues. And then in 2018, I had to have surgery on my foot mm -hmm. and spent 18 months recovering from that only to then have my coach walk away from coaching without any explanation. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, we had no idea why. And it wasn't yeah. until six months later that he found out he had a brain tumor and thankfully is okay now, but he's not coaching anymore. So there were just a lot of things that weren't ideal. And it was like, yeah, there were times when I was just like, what the heck? Like, why give me this yeah. gift and like 
open this door and like mm -hmm. have all this excitement and this hope only to be kind of let down by circumstances. But yeah. at the same time, I think um, it's just taught me that things don't always go according to plan. And sometimes we learn more through hard things than we do when things work out the way we want them to. So seriously, that's, that's a loaded question, but a loaded answer. Like that's so real. I think we, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we learn so much more in times like that than we do. I think in um, times when the path is easy. So that's definitely very true. Mm -hmm. um, and then last quick question I had for you, kind of like all of us, some of your dreams, especially for the next Olympics and your goals have been put on hold. Um, so what has God been, been really showing you during this time about, you know, your future plans and how to handle that? Again, it comes back to the whole thing of like, it's not my plan because yeah. as athletes, we're taught this kind of narrative of if you work hard you put in the time, you put in the effort, you get the results. And so we have this mentality toward things where it's like, I have control, I have some control. And even when it comes to mm -hmm. injury, I think we have this mindset of like, well, if I train smart, and I eat well, and I get mm -hmm. rest, I that's can real. limit yeah. injury. And that's just not how life works. Like, mm -hmm. it's not our plan. It's yeah. God's plan that he has for us. And that's really hard to wrap your mind around. But I think everything that's happening with COVID is like this wake up call for the world yeah. of like, oh my goodness, like we really don't have control. That's real. And yeah. we have control over how we respond to it emotionally and spiritually, but we don't have control necessarily yeah. over the situation. So yeah. that's what he's teaching me. Um, myself specifically, I'm in a situation where I was going to retire after the 2020 Olympics yeah. this summer mm -hmm. and I, I'm married and was really looking forward to kind of what was next for me and starting my family and that sort of thing in my career. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm at a crossroads where I'm really asking God, like, what is next for me? And are you still, do you still have the Olympics 2021 on the table for me? Is that my path? And that's a really hard thing to look at and to be mm -hmm. honest about. So I'm just kind of praying through that right now. I haven't made any decisions, um, yeah. but just kind of resting and giving myself some time to process. And I know a yeah. lot of athletes yeah. are in the same situation, not exactly the same, but mm -hmm. I'm sure you are having your own experience with all of this and how it affects your career and just like not knowing what's next. It's, it's yeah, hard. No, I think for all of us, it's not even just athletes, but in life, you know, people mm -hmm. not knowing when, they're going to go back to their jobs, people not knowing, you know, what's going to happen in the next one, two, three, four months. And so, um, you know, whether it's sports or whatever it is, just trusting in God's plan is something that it's not always easy to do, but it's what we have to do. And it gives us the most peace and comfort that we can get, you know, in times mm -hmm. like this, for sure. Yeah, I don't know what yeah. I would do if I if I didn't have my faith in yeah. a time like this, because yeah. I would just feel like, I would be very, very anxious, I think. And I'm yeah. still, I, and there's we, still I, some. Yeah, still are. Yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. But, but it's like, we know that there is hope and that's comforting. That's so real. That's yeah. like, seriously. Well, I, I really just want to pray for you and, th and thank you again for being on here with us and just sharing yeah. and being vulnerable. Let me just pray for you really quick and then Thanks. I'm going to have to kick you. So sorry. <laughs> All right, please bow. Dear Lord, we just thank you for Kelsey being on here with us tonight, God. We, we thank you that she was able to just be vulnerable with us. Her past experiences, God, in, in the Olympics and in life. And um, you know how much she's learned from her faith, how much she's learned to trust you. And we pray that you continue to show her that, God. And in times like this and in times to come, God, with all the uncertainty surrounding her career and everything going on, God, that you just continue to watch over her and help her to trust you and trust in the plan that you have for her over all things, Lord. And we just thank you. Uh, we praise you for your son. Um, in your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. I have one more thing I really yes. want to say really quickly. Go ahead. Yes. yes. Um, so my very good friend, Vera Schmitz, started a company called Dwell Differently. And mm -hmm. what it is, is every single month you get this little package and you memorize one verse a month okay. and you get a temporary tattoo. And the tattoo has the first letter of each word in the verse on it. Mm -hmm. and it helps you memorize it. So 
This one is satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love that we may sing for joy and be glad all of our days. And it helps That's you memorize awesome. a verse. So go follow Dwell Differently. Vera was a part of Athletes in Action at Indiana. And That's she awesome. is, has been a mentor and friend to me in my own faith walk. And mm. I would love to see everyone just follow Dwell Differently and check it out. It's really encouraging. So yeah, feel free to put it in the comments too. Yeah, and get some people. I'll yeah. do that. And then, yeah, all right. Okay. All right, cool. thanks, Kelsey. Yeah. How do I go out of here? I got you. I got you. Man, that was awesome. Seriously, like, I think um, for a lot of us athletes, you know, we, we love our sport, but to be an Olympian, like, that is live. That's so cool. Um, and, you know, before we get started with the talk tonight, I got about mm, 10 minutes left. Uh, I'm going to keep it short, so just a couple of shout-outs for you guys. Um, first of all, for Nick, Nick Castelluccio, if you guys don't know him, Northwestern guys, uh, we, Northwestern guys and girls, we definitely do. Um, shout out Nick for being the GOAT and for, you know, asking me to speak tonight. Um, and also shout out for Lance, shout out to Lance for getting me connected with Kelsey um, and just kind of setting things up and getting that going smoothly with her. Um, and also for beating COVID, shout out him uh, and his wife, Kristen, that's, that's live too. And we, we thank God for that. Um, again, shout out to Kelsey uh, just for coming on and, and sharing the word and sharing her experiences with us. You know, it's so cool to hear from her, an Olympic athlete. Man, that's live. Um, and then ultimately my big shout out to Jamie. Um, you know, I checked the devotionals yesterday morning and Jamie's talking about Easter and I go, Oh no, he's going to steal my thunder. And sure enough, first Corinthians 15, boom, there it is. He, you know, he, if you already listen to Jamie's talk, you can just leave right now. Uh, he, he took all my words. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, um, you know, Jamie, I think actually did set it up really well. Um, you know, for what I want to talk about tonight and that is, that is the resurrection. And so, um, and the good news of Jesus Christ. And so uh, first, I, I want to start off. This is let's let me know if you guys can see the slides up there. Just give me a thumbs up and then I'll get going. Um, let's see. This is working. All right. Um, just let me know. Give me a thumbs up. if You can see this and then I'll get going. Good. We're good to go. Sweet. All right. So. This is uh, indeed yours truly. Uh, I'm going to share a little quick story with you guys. I'm sure a lot of you guys are, um, you know, cooped up, uh, need a little happiness in your lives. So this is yours truly. I'm about one years old here. Uh, one year old. Sorry, it's not plural. Um, about one year old. And just to give you guys a little background, I was a uh, very rambunctious child, ran around a lot, screamed a lot, cried a lot. Um, and you know, I, when I was about eight or nine months old, I started to figure out how to talk and I could start putting sentences together about when I was one year old. Uh, and when I could start introducing myself, that's when it really, you know, it, it was game over. And I started um, introducing myself to everyone wherever we went, you know, whether it was in the car, um, you know, in, in the grocery store, I'd be in the shopping cart waving to everyone saying, hi, I'm Eric. And I had this lisp <laughs> until I was about six. And so I had the funniest little talk, um, you know, for a couple of years there. But um you know, and, and one particular story, I, you know, I was, we lived in the, a high rise building when I was a kid and uh, when I was a baby and my, my younger brother had just been born. And so I got escaped from the apartment, ran in the elevator and went all the way down to the ground floor. My mom had chased me down there um, and she was worried someone was going to take me. And uh, um, she got down there and I, I was surrounded by about 20 people and I was just <laughs> introducing myself and waving at everyone and saying hi. Um, and just, I love to introduce myself and talk to them. And I thought I had the best news ever. You know, I could. I said, hi, I'm Eric. And that was the coolest. Sport. My poor mother is right, Lindsay. Uh, she had sits, you know, every day taking care of me. Um, and so when I go, where I want to go with this is that, and keep it quick, keep it quick, is that um, I thought I had the best news ever introducing myself and saying who I was. But the best news ever that we have to share with someone in this life is, is the gospel of Jesus Christ and his death and his resurrection. That's what I want to talk about tonight. Um, it's the greatest gift that I've ever received. And hopefully it's the greatest thing that you guys have received or hopefully will receive tonight or um, at some point in the future. So um, again, shout out Jamie for talking about, um, you know, first Corinthians 15 yesterday. That's where we're going to be. If you guys want to turn there and be there the whole time, first Corinthians 15. Um, and so just to give you guys a little bit of a background. So um, we'll go to the next slide here. We're not going to get there yet, but um, so 1 Corinthians 15, Paul, uh, Paul is talking to the church in Corinth, and unlike a lot of the churches that he's written the epistles to before, um, you know, the church in Corinth actually has done a good job of, of holding firm 
um, and, and, and staying true to the faith of, of in Jesus Christ that Paul has given to them. Um, and so, you know, this in ch entire chapter, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, is just um, kind of the, from the way I look at it, it's just encouragement. You know, Paul is um, Paul's reminding them, saying, hey, guys, you know, I see what, I see what you're doing. I see your faith. Um, and I just want to remind you about this is the truth we believe, and this is the faith that we have. This is not my gospel. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ, our Savior and our King. And so he just wants to remind remind them of that. And so I just want to talk about three big takeaways, and I'll keep it keep it quick. I know you guys got a lot going on, but uh, three big takeaways that I get from the resurrection of Jesus Christ and from this passage. Um, and so the first one, as you guys can probably see on the screen, is grace. So I'll read uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and then it's it's 2 through 3 there, but I'll read 1 through 3. So he starts off. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. So again, like I said, he's, he's just re-encouraging them. He's saying, I know that um, you have believed in, in what I've told you, but I just want to encourage you to stand firm in that. And then verse two, by this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. Um, and so I think, this is, you know, one of the biggest takeaways that I think we can all get from the resurrection is that it is the greatest gift we can possibly receive. And that um, to put it in kind of um, analogous terms, but um, when Jesus died on the cross, he took our punishment, our separation and, and death that we deserve from sinning and, and being separated from God from eternity for eternity. Um, but when he rose again from the grave, this is the big part. When he rose again from the grave, he gave us our reward. So he took, he took the bad part and gave us the good part. He gave us the reward, but took all the punishment that we could possibly see, receive. And all we have to do is just believe in him. And we get grace and forgiveness for everything that has happened wrong in humanity. And everything that we could have ever done and will do in the future is gone. Clean slate. It's forgiven. And that, my friends, is grace. And that's the first biggest take, the biggest takeaway that I got from this is that um, his torture, his suffering, his death, and his anguish uh, was atonement for all of us. But his resurrection... Uh, was ultimately what signifies not only his status as the perfect Messiah, Savior, and Son of God, but ultimately it signifies the end of our separation from God for the rest of eternity. And that's the, you know, I, I want to transition with that um, into the second big takeaway that I got from this. So hopefully this slide shows up here. Yeah, it's, it's fulfillment. And um, so where I'm going with this is that you know, the death and resurrection, and particularly the resurrection of Jesus, not only fulfills the Old Testament, but fulfills the greatest promise in history itself. You know, starting all the way back in Genesis, I'll, I'll you know, paraphrase it for you guys. You know, Adam, God created Adam and Eve, the first, the first humans um, on this planet, and, and they sinned, and they fell short. They ate from the tree of life that God told them not to. And God, you know, finds them in the garden and comes down, and he's starting to dish out punishments to them in Genesis 3. And the first person God talks to, I think, I believe, is actually the serpent and or satan and, and god says um is talking about you know the conflict between the offspring of satan or satan himself and the offspring of adam and eve and um so god says to the serpent for he will crush your head and you will strike his heel and i think if you look at you know man itself death satan evil the serpent is continuing to strike our heel every single day and it struck jesus's heel you know he was on that cross he succumbed to death he felt pain, he felt torture, he felt suffering. But ultimately, he, when he got out of that tomb on the third day, he stepped on Satan's freaking head and he won. And that's, the, that's fulfillment, if, if, you know, if we're being real here. And that's fulfillment. He crushed Satan once and for all. Um, and when he comes back, um, that is the ultimate fulfillment. And, and I want to set something straight for you guys, too, um, is that, you know, from, you know, throughout the Old Testament and even into, um, and even into the beginning of the New Testament, you know, God's people really believed um, you know, their Messiah would be a, a king, a noble warrior, a savior riding in on a, a sweet stallion, you know, with majestic armor and a huge army. No, but you know what our king was? He was a carpenter born in a manger and he rode in on a donkey and he still got up on that cross and he won for all of us and he beat death and he got this dub. And you know what? We all get to be with him if we believe. And that's the greatest promise fulfilled by Jesus himself. And um, you know what? That's the greatest fulfillment I've ever seen. That's the greatest promise that we could ever receive. Um, and I think we can all be encouraged by that. And, and um, you know, the last, the last big takeaway that I have um, from 1 Corinthians 15, um, we'll, we'll skip down a little bit. That's uh, the application, but um, it's hope. Um, and we'll skip down to 15 uh, verses 19 through 20, but I'll give you guys a little context um, on the verses before. 
And um, so in, I think, verse 15 through, yeah, about actually verse 12 through uh, 19 here, Paul is kind of outlining what it means um, if the resurrection hasn't happened. You know, what do we go? What do we, where do we go? What does it mean? Um, and just to kind of sum this up. So Paul, in, in a couple of verses, I'll sum this up for you linearly. But if there is no resurrection of Jesus Christ, then death is one. Death beat Jesus. If death beats Jesus, then Jesus isn't God. And finally, if Jesus isn't God, then we are still in our sins and we can't be forgiven. And, and even in verse 19, when he goes into that, um, you know, verse 19, he says, and even if only for this life, we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. So Paul's saying, even, you know, even if what we believe in Jesus is true, but it only applies to the 70 or 80 something odd years we have on earth, what's the point? Shout out Brooke Riley, everything is vanity, Ecclesiastes, you know, it's like, what do we believe in Jesus for? But no, seriously, I think we see it all come to conclusion in verse 20. Paul says, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. In Christ, we have hope for eternal life. And, and Paul is, Paul's being real with us. You know, he's saying, Paul's saying, you know, I've suffered. I don't have the best life ever. I'm being persecuted. You know, I'm, I'm going through turmoil every single day for the gospel. But you know what? My hope is not for this life. My hope is for all of eternity when I get to be in the presence of the greatest king and the greatest savior, Jesus, and God the Father and the Spirit for all of eternity. And that's what Paul is hoping for. And I think that's what we should all be hoping for is, you know, not comfort, not, you know, safety in this life, but glory and eternal paradise in heaven with Jesus and God himself. And so that's good news. And so I want to, before I conclude and, and pray us out, I just want to, um, you know, give you guys a quick application here, the last verse of, of uh, 1 Corinthians 15, and I'll read it to you guys. Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And so Paul kind of comes full circle here. He starts off saying, you know, I, I know what you've believed. I know you, I, I've seen that you've believed in the gospel and you've stood firm in it, but I just want to encourage you guys one more time. Um, stand firm, you know, let nothing move you. And I want to encourage you guys the same thing as we're going through a lot of uncertainty, a lot of um, anxiety, a lot of stress. We don't know what's going to happen these next few months. Our lives are kind of upended. We have no idea what's going on. Let nothing move you. Let nothing shake you because we have eternal hope through the fulfillment and grace that Jesus Christ has given us. And um, the last verse, the last part of that verse, he says, um, always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And so that's the last thing I want to leave you guys with it. Like it says in Colossians, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, um, give, do it all for the glory of God. And so, you know, whatever, if you're stuck inside right now, like most of us are, um, or, you know, whenever we get back to this thing called life, just encourage you guys to live your lives for Christ. You know, he's given us so much hope. He has fulfilled that empty void and, and, you know, those promises that he's given to God has given to his people for um, eons and, and thousands of years. But ultimately, he's given us grace and he's forgiven us of every sin um, in the past, present and future. And so with that, you know, I think we can all live our lives for Christ and, and take that step and just believe in him, believe in that that he has died for us, but ultimately that he rose again, that he conquered death. Uh, and he has given us. Yes, Lindsay, he's given us so much freedom in Christ just to believe in him, to trust in him and live for him eternally. And so I just want to pray us out really quick. I appreciate you guys for letting me speak to you guys tonight. And um, I'll just pray us out really quickly. Lord, we love you so much. And we just thank you for who you are. And thank you for speaking through me tonight, God. And, and thank you for your spirit. And thank you for who you are, God. But we thank you for your son. We thank you that he came down and lived a perfect life for us. And he was a nobody, God but he died for all of us and, and he took, took all of our blame, God, uh, to give us grace. And he fulfilled the greatest promise that you've given to us. And through that, Lord, we have eternal hope for eternal life with you. And God, I just pray for everyone listening tonight that they would believe that and stand firm in that. And if not, God, that they would just come to know you. Lord, I just, I, I thank you for who you are and I thank you for, for letting me share tonight and everyone that's contributed to this, God. And we just praise you and we thank you and we love you forever and ever. In your son's name we pray, amen. Guys, thanks for coming. Thanks for joining me tonight. Um, I'm going to leave this up for a little bit. If you guys want to chat, if you guys got any prayer requests, um, just let me know. I, I love all you guys. If I don't know you, I promise I still love you. Um, and reach out to me. Feel free. Reach out to any of the AIA staff members. Um, I just I want to be real with you guys. I hope I was well, I hope I was real with you guys tonight. 
um, and just let me know if, if you need have any prayer requests at all, um, anything going on, just let me pray for you. Reach out to me, reach out to um, a staff member. Um, so just let me know. I love you guys. Um, and uh, let's see, you guys are free to go, but feel free to put yourself in the comments if you want to join, get on the live stream for a little bit. Let me know, plead your case. Who wants to hop on with, with your boy and see what we got. Anyone? Any takers? If not, I'll just kind of sit here and stare at you guys. Lindsay, I love you too. Miss you. Guys, I miss you all. I wish we were back. Back in beautiful shy. Let me, is Sam on here? Sam, I'm coming for you, buddy. I didn't know if you were on here. You might have ditched. Come on, baby. Let's see if this thing is working. All right. I'm, I'm working on it, guys. How many lows would Rob Lowe low? Whoa, Rob Lowe, Rob, if Rob Lowe could Rob Lowe. Oh, I don't know, Kaylee. I don't think I could tell you that. All right. I'm trying to get Sam on here. We're having some uh, technical difficulties at the moment. Come on, baby. Come on. All right. Let's see what we can do here. Lord, please help this to work. It's not working for me. Come on. All right, guys. I'm trying here. Ah, I flipped my screen. Sorry about that. All right. I'm going to be real with you. I'm trying to add them. I'm trying to hit the add button. It's not pulling up for me. Um, I'm going to keep, just keep hitting it for the next <laughs> couple minutes, but I don't know. I don't know if it's working. If not, I'm going to stay on the line. Feel free to give me some, uh, give me some uh, questions. Give me some conversation starters. We'll just keep it going for like two more minutes. Thank you, Lindsay. Oh, that actually makes me feel a lot better. It's having some technical difficulties, but <laughs> Mac. Oh my goodness. I love you, Mac. Shout out to you. You're the best person in Florida. Go cats. Kaylee, does it actually? Thank you. That means a lot. You know, I, I really need a haircut. It's been like five weeks. Actually, it might be six weeks now. But honestly, like I was planning on growing it out, but I just don't know, don't, don't know what to do with it because I can't get it cut. I tried cutting it myself. It did not work out too well, but uh, who knows? Emma. All right. Let's see if we can do it here. All right. Well, honestly, it's still not working. We got, I'll keep it up for, stop saying I need a haircut. What the heck? Okay, fine. Fine. I'll stop saying it, but. You know what? I, you're right. I do always say that because I usually get a haircut every like two weeks, two, three weeks. You know, I could. Did you, Lindsay, did you see me buzz it last year? I buzzed it out for uh, football season. I buzzed it. It was, I liked it. Lexi, I don't know. Like, honestly, in high school, I could pull out pictures. It was like pretty curly out to here. I had almost like an afro going, but I don't know if I could bring that back. I don't know if I could rock it. Ooh, yeah. Frosted tips. I have thought about frosted tips. I, yes, I could dye it too. Honestly, guys, what if I got a perm? JT S two thousands S perm. That's what I'm. That's I think I might have to go with that, guys. Man bun, Eric. Eh, I don't know. That's iffy. I think I'm going with the perm. Man bun. Eh, yeah. All right. I'm gonna close this out here, guys. I gotta end this. I'm sorry I couldn't add Sam, but I love you all. Uh, oh, perm the beard, Brooke Riley. Oh goodness, that would be a sight to see. The beard's rolling, Emma. Don't worry. This thing isn't coming off for months. All right? Never perm my hair. Watch me. I'm going to perm my hair, Mac. I'm going to do it just for you. All right, guys. Got to peace out. I love you all. I'll talk to you soon.